Previously on Woodbrew, we got the electrical ran through the floor for the interior lights, fan, and porch lights. We also got the camper bolted down to the trailer so we can now place it in the floor and finally attach the hatch, which was ridiculously difficult. Wow. Now we are finally getting to trimming out the doors. Don't mess up. That's all you got left. This is within hmm, half of an inch of the exact length we need. And getting the kitchen back in place now that the hatch is on. If you like this video, we have an entire playlist on building this teardrop from at the very start. And subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss the next one. Hey guys, welcome back to the camper build. In this video, we're starting off with door trim, which is something that I've been putting off for quite a while now, but it's finally time to tackle this task because it is stopping us from attaching the doors, which if you watched last week's video, we teased at the end that they were on. So first things first, we gotta get started by ripping up some of these ePay deck boards. This was just stuff that I had laying around. So I decided to use it. So ripping them up into small strips and we're gonna start outlining more or less this door to give us a good trim ring for both the rain shield and to attach the hinges and the door to later. Drilling into the side of my perfectly waterproof camper. Those look pretty cool though. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be totally fine. This is gonna work amazingly well. It's not gonna be fiddly, it's just gonna work. And when it does, I'll be so happy and proud. Everything will just be all hunky-dory and amazing. It's just going to oh, it's just going to stay just like that. And it's just going to open up and it's just going to be absolutely world class. <laughs> Look at it. Wow. Now that's a door right there. Huh? No. Oh. Proud parent moment. Mm -hmm. Proud parent. Now one of these bad boys is going to go like that, alright? Then one of these bad boys right here, don't know if this is the right one, but she's going to go just like that. Ooh, explain that real quick. And buddy, what are we explaining? The latch. What? I guess I should explain why in the world we're doing it in the first place. Yeah. Why does it even need this, right? 
Well, as you can see, this thing sticks out quite a bit. In my original design, I used a much smaller bulb seal, but in real, in, in, no, no. but in real life, that actually didn't work so well. Like it was fine, but the door basically had to be absolutely perfectly flat or else that seal wouldn't work because it was only about a quarter of an inch. This is three quarters of an inch, so we got lots of room to play with here to get a good tight seal. But because of that, it makes a door stick out. So we're doing this nice surround, which does a couple things for us actually that are good beyond that. It gets, we're gonna have a kind of a bit of a rain guard up here now. So I'm gonna champ for the top edge of the piece that goes up here. So any rain that hits should sort of, sort of shed over the door. And then over here as well, any, any rain that's traveling down the side of the camper, so you're going down the highway, and it's going down the side of the camper, isn't gonna hit a hard edge and go in to the camper. This is gonna be all nice and sealed up and chamfered a bit, so that any rain that hits is gonna be deflected and brought off so it's not driven into the seal. So it should create a more watertight door, but it also gives us room to add in our door latch system here. So as you can see, when this comes in like that, it's gonna give us enough room to put our dead, deadbolt and whatnot in here. Cause uh, this, thing's, this thing's got sort of a traditional style RV latch. If I was to do it again, I wouldn't do this because I thought this looked good, but it was actually quite difficult to do. So I might go a more traditional teardrop style latch. And it's gonna help break up the color cause yeah. It's just a lot of gray. Well, it looks quite nice. It looks like a boat. Mm -hmm. Also, this wood is extraordinarily heavy. So probably the worst wood to pick as far as weight goes, but absolute best wood to pick as far as durability goes. This is Ipe, and it's essentially like concrete. It literally drill bits smoke when you drill into this. So it's incredibly dense. I had a lot of it, well not a lot, I had just enough laying around of it. And uh, so even though we're, we're definitely sacrificing weight here, it's gonna be a really strong, extremely durable end product. So. Hopefully this is not just us, but it seems like something breaks all the time. Our washing machine, chainsaw, and iPad are some just to name a few. We love having our iFixit toolkits around for anything that breaks because they will have any bit we need to open or replace parts. And they have all the tools for prying electronic screens off, for example. And we even use those tools to open panels in our old truck to fix some wires. They also sell replacement parts to so many different electronics. We replaced my Dyson battery not too long ago because mine was toast. And they had a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it all. Check out all of iFixit's quality toolkits. There are so many variations of sizes, so you can find one that fits what you need best. Thank you iFixit for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the camper. Should be hard to press. Oh. And it locks in. Well, these are gonna get worn in over time. So we want to start off pretty darn tight or else it won't be tight later. Cool. Now after installing these doors, we sort of realized it would be better to recess the hinges for a couple of reasons. One, it takes a bit of load off of the screws since the hinges are actually gonna be sitting in a pocket and on a ledge, but two, it actually compresses 
the seal a bit more, which was something I was concerned about all along. I wanted to make sure that we had a proper seal and that everything was being compressed evenly and the right amount because with these seals you can over compress them or worse you could even under compress them but either way we want a really tight seal to start off with so as things sort of wear in this thing remains watertight now i set up a quick little jig using the router and a template cutting bit super easy way to cut a pocket out here you just make basically the exact size hole as the square you want to make and then you just have to clean up the corners where the router bit sort of makes a round in there and that worked out really well for cutting these pockets really nerve-wracking though because i had no extra wood to spare so this entire time i had to make sure that i did not mess this up which as you'll see in a second wasn't really the case did it backwards Luckily, we had maybe just the right amount that we could possibly get this done with. We actually had no idea if redoing this was going to basically make us a board short. We were just winging it at this point and hoping and praying that in the end, we would end up being able to sort of use pieces out of the piece that we messed up. And uh, ultimately, we, we did make it. It was very, very close though. and We had no boards extra to spare. And I have to say, I've been really pleasantly surprised at how this whole door thing has turned out. It was really intimidating when we started this project of making our own doors. And we'll get to whether or not it was financially a better decision when we get to the video of talking about the overall cost. But so far, I think the doors are actually going to perform as intended, which is a bit of a sigh of, sigh of relief on my part. One of the trickiest parts about this door was the entire latching mechanism and everything. I wanted to use these, you know, traditional RV door latches, but I think it was a bit of a mistake because they were really finicky to get in place and they get just right and they're not really adjustable over time. So if I was to do it again, I would do some sort of like compression latch system for that. But yeah, a lot of this time spent on these doors has just been sort of trying to figure out the latch system. And finally, I had to make a yet another piece of trim this was the trickiest piece because it had to go around the wheel well and had a couple of odd angles on it to make everything match up but ultimately turned out pretty well now before you ask yes these are going to be varnished but we're actually going to take them all the way back off the camper you'll see that in our next video varnish them and then put them back on and seal up around them as well so this is sort of a temporary fit that we're doing right now With the doors hung in place, it was time to finally add in the windows, which is something I've been waiting on for this entire project because these have just been sitting in a box and I've really wanted to see how they would look in the doors and with the camper and everything. This is a big moment, I think, for us in this project. So getting these windows in is a big, big sigh of relief. One thing because they are not easy to install as they may appear to be. They are quite finicky, but they all went in pretty well and I think they're going to be nice and weather tight and work really well. Don't mess up. That's all you got left. This is within mm, half of an inch of the exact length we need. We have no more of this wood. I actually don't even know if I can get more of it. So. Uh, Needless to say, this is a quadruple check type of cutting going on right now. So, no screw ups, Dylan. No pressure. It's 
same measurement. I do have to say that I eyeballed all of this and got it first try. Did you really? I Yeah. I haven't made one extra cut. And I eyeballed every single one of them. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Let's erase that footage so that I can do this last piece yeah, before I let's, say that. Yeah, erase that. Oh, got about a half of an inch. About a half of an inch of uh, room to screw this up. This should be long. Very long. That looks good. Look at that. See that? Nice. <laughs> With one stressful job done, it's time to move on to another stressful one. And that is cutting some of the floor away here near the back of the hatch because after all the layers of bed liner and finish were applied, it got pretty tight, so we ended up having to cut some of that away, and we'll have to get that resealed in order to make sure it's nice and watertight. But with that out of the way, we could actually apply the hatch seal, which is a really important step because it's going to let us know if everything that we've designed so far is actually going to work as far as the sealing goes. So this is a pretty big moment, and there are some minor adjustments we need to make, but ultimately I think it is going to work. So like it has to be basically so hard to wrap my head around this. Now let me tell you, these gas struts were the death of me in this project. Trying to figure out how exactly I was going to do this was really challenging because the hatch is on an angle, there's also a shelf in the way, and there's also the kitchen countertop in the way, and the closing angles and everything were just really complicated. So I ended up having to sit inside and just sort of ponder this thing over and over and over again and just use trial and error until something actually worked. And it's not exactly the way I would have ideally had it happen, but in the end, I think I got a solution that's gonna end up working. Now back to the disaster of a countertop situation that we had a couple episodes ago with the Formica not sticking. I am back to sanding and scraping off of that glue because we're going back to basically ground zero and rethinking that whole thing. So we still haven't quite decided what the countertop's going to be, but we're getting this part prepped because we're going to add some something over this. We're not exactly sure, but it won't be for Formica. And now back to the gas strut saga because uh, still, you know, I was struggling with that. And off camera, I actually made some aluminum brackets, which I won't bore you with the details of because they're literally just rectangles with the corners cut off and a few holes drilled in them. But I did it off camera because, as you can imagine, this was uh, quite frustrating to me and we had some moments. So, uh, didn't, didn't quite make the cut. It's going to compress. I think it worked. 
I think. <clears throat> I find for me at least, sometimes it's best to just walk away from a really frustrating part of a build, move on to something else, or just stop working for the day and come back later and just try again. And that's sort of what I did with this. And the next day, we figured it out. So it was time to just move on to continuing to install the rest of the galley area. And then moving on finally, towards the end of this video, we'll be putting in the other gas strut so we can actually see this whole thing work for the first time. I can't tell you guys how much of a relief it was seeing this thing finally close right there for the first time and it not binding up or having any issues. Oh, it was a huge sigh of relief. Well guys, this project has been a really long one, much longer than we anticipated, but we're in the final home stretch. It finally feels like we're like closing in, you know, on the finish line. Maybe a little. Every time I look at this thing, I see five more things that need to happen. <laughs> yeah, lots of little details, but we're getting there. And hopefully very soon in the next few episodes, perhaps, this thing will be rolling out and ready for its first journey. We're literally in the middle of making the next video. Like we're in the middle between coats of finishes. So we're hustling, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this series. Thank you again, iFixit, for sponsoring this week's video and continuing to fight for our right to repair. And with that out of the way, we will see you. <coughs> Get it out. We will see you guys in the next one. Peace.